Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Greetings and welcome to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been talking about two questions that we need to ask ourselves all the time. That is, where are you and what are you doing here? Where are you in life and how did you get here? And I've said all along, these are very painful questions, but it's necessary that we ask ourselves this. So we get a location of where we are so we be able to move forward. You cannot move forward until we locate ourselves. So in Genesis 3 and 9, uh, the Lord had asked Adam, where are you? And in 1 Kings 19 and 9, the Lord had said to Elijah, what are you doing here? And he asked Elijah that twice. And Elijah gave him the same answer because in Elijah's answer, he actually thought he was telling the truth. And until we actually understand what the truth is and how do we get there and where we are, then we can't move forward. So the Lord asked us these two questions. But we must answer them. It is not for him to give us the answers because when you give a person the answers, it really doesn't help them uh, locate themselves. It's just where you say I am. And we need to be able to be honest enough with ourselves to uh, identify where we are. There's a third question that is, that is in the book of Genesis that I want to talk about, and that is Genesis 18 and 14. And that is what the Lord said to Abraham and Sarah, especially to Abraham. And this question is this, is anything too hard for the Lord? Would you just hear that? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for God? Very powerful question. This question can can bring us out of whatever the situation we're in, whatever dilemma that is facing us. Uh, just to answer this question can bring us out of that. But we have to be willing to ask ourselves this question and come up with an honest answer. Uh, is there anything too hard for God? Now, this question will help us with the first two questions. The first two questions, we, we talked about where you are and what are you doing there? How did you get there? So when we begin to think about that we're at a location that we would rather not be at. We're at a place where we have now understood that we are in the wrong place. We shouldn't be in this place. And we got here because of the mistakes and the choices that we made or the people we were around. And that's crucial. I really want you to understand that because that is crucial. And we want to talk about that, that many times people end up where they are because of the people they associate with and because of the decisions and choices, of course, they make, but because of who they are hanging around, who they are around, who they have surrounded themselves with. The Bible is real clear in the book of 1 Corinthians. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible really speaks volumes to us concerning this, and it talks about evil communication evil communication and what evil communication does it corrupts good manners that's what it does it corrupts good manners so we want to make sure that we have surrounded ourselves with the best possible people sometimes we don't put much uh thinking into who we put around ourselves surround ourselves with but i want to talk about I want to talk about that we are where we are mainly because of who we have surrounded ourselves with. And we want to talk about that. Uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 33, uh, be not deceived, evil communication, corrupt good manners. And when we talk about e evil communication, we're talking about evil behavior, just evil behavior. Now, these two questions, where are you and how did you get there that we spent uh, the last week talking about? The one, the one question that can bring us out of this is, is there anything too hard for God? Because it doesn't matter where you are. 
It doesn't matter if it was your fault and you did it to yourself. We, when we begin to think about the grace and the mercy of God, and there's nothing too hard for God, the Bible teaches us that we have not because we ask not. And we serve a God that can do anything. So even today, wherever you are, God is able to move you from that spot. I believe the reason why so many people are not willing to locate or willing to deal with where they are, because it can be very painful. It can be very painful to locate yourself financially, especially when you begin to think about all the times that we have blown money and and how much money we wasted uh, as young people growing up and opportunities that that we did not take advantage of. That can be painful. And that's that second question. How did you get here? Well, I got here because of the decisions and the choices that I've made or the people I was hanging around. So that's why the Lord asked, he asked uh, Abraham, is there anything too hard for God? And even though Abraham was going on 100 and Sarah 90, God was saying to them, you're still going to have a child because nothing is impossible with God. There is nothing impossible with God. I love what Jeremiah says in the book of Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah, there are some things that uh, Jeremiah talks about. Uh, is it anything too hard for God? And I love that. Love how he says there is nothing. There is nothing uh, too hard for God. But I want to talk about just uh, one of the main things that take people to a place they don't want to be, locate them in the wrong place, and that is relationships. Relationships are the most powerful ingredients in life. Relationships. Relationships. They're very, very powerful. And we have to understand how powerful a relationship is. And that's why... In the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul says that we are not to be deceived. It's the reason why he says that. It's the reason why he attaches that. He attaches that to this uh, verse. He starts off with saying, be not deceived. And the reason he's saying be not deceived, because sometimes we do believe that we can uh, surround ourselves with uh, anyone, any kind of behavior, and still be all right. And, and that is deception. That is deception. In order for us to go where we want to go, then we must surround ourselves with, with the kind of people that are going the way we want to go. So he starts off by saying, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. He's driving home this point that we need to know that if we don't if we don't be around the people that can take us where we want to go, then it will corrupt us. It will corrupt us. It will spoil us. We will not uh, accomplish the things we want to accomplish. And I'm going to I'm going to point out some uh, relationships in the Bible, some relationships in the Bible that. Uh, relocated, relocated people from a place of prosperity and a place of happiness and a place of joy to a place of dread, all because of their association. Because anytime you are in a relationship, and I'm not just talking about man and woman, but I'm talking about uh, friendship, the friends you have around you, the people you surround yourself with, it's a true saying that uh, that birds of a feather, they flock together. And, and because the more that you are around the person, the more you take on their habits and their proclivities and their way of talking and speaking. So that's why this is a divine principle that evil communication corrupt good manners. One bad apple one rotten apple placed in a barrel of good apples 
will mess up the whole barrel. Just give it some time. Just give it some time. It might not be it might not be apparent, it might not seem like nothing is happening, but the whole barrel is being polluted and corrupted. Why? Because it is a divine principle from the Lord. So we want to talk about this, not just where are you, Adam, and also how did you get here or what does thou hear, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? We want to talk about some things that will get us off course in life. And I'm not just talking about, I'm not just talking about uh, according to gender or even age. I'm talking about any of us. Because this is a divine principle that all of us are susceptible to, and that is who we surround ourselves with. So we want to pay close attention in the days to come as we begin to talk about this most powerful force, one of the most powerful force that one can engage in, and that is relationship, relationship, relationship. I like to think of it when I say relationship is like being in the same ship. So if you're in the same ship, whatever happens, it's going to affect everybody on board. Now, it's good to understand that. There's many people that are imprisoned, that are incarcerated, that are in the grave today. If they had only understood this principle, then they wouldn't be dead or in prison today. Because whatever happens when you're in a relationship, when you're in a ship with somebody, uh, it's going to affect everybody on board. If somebody knocks a hole in the ship, doesn't matter if you did it or not, water start coming in, it's going to affect everybody on the ship. It's kind of like the Titanic. The Titanic, you know, what happened to the Titanic hitting that iceberg? It wasn't, it wasn't anybody, um, the majority of the people, 99% of the people on the, on the ship, it wasn't their fault. Just one or two people made a mistake, but it affected everybody on the ship. And what I'm saying to you, so it is in relationship. When you're in a relationship, something happens, it affects everybody on the ship. Everybody. So if they go down, the ship is going down, you're going down with the ship. So that's why it's so important for us to understand this law and this divine principle. We're going to talk about this in the days to come as we continue to talk about what God said to Adam. Adam, where are you? And also what God says to Elijah. What are you doing here? Not just where you are, but how did, how did you get here? And I believe when we begin to look at the dynamics of a relationship, we're going to be able to see how powerful a relationship is. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank's